Education is facing one of the greatest unscripted challenges that it has ever faced before, one that shakes its very foundation. Why? Because of the integration of high-speed computing and communications technology. In this flattening world, knowledge is transferred across the globe at the speed of light, creating a viscous global village, providing for some opportunities of great success, and for others, chaos. Chaos in the mathematical sense, bifurcations, attractors, nonlinear processes. In this nonlinear world, things do not add up. The formula for success is more difficult to understand, and here is the key. Small and significant changes can cause huge responses on the significant scale. Moving on to the global freeway in part requires that we understand the nonlinear dynamics of our flattening world. If you think that technology is getting easier, it is not. Holding on to the edge or keeping pace with technology is becoming more difficult, even for technology veterans. What we are seeing is an acceleration of innovation. As the world turns, it is also flattening, and in this new saga, we are transitioning from the industrial age of social Darwinism to the information age of connected dislocation, an age where employees who once worked for companies 30, 40, and 50 years now expect to transition jobs every three to five years. The industrial age operated on the economic principle of creative destruction. The way we moved forward was to replace what we had with something better those companies that refused to innovate got gobbled up. In the information age, global connectivity has created an efficient outsourcing engine, and as a result, foreign companies with lower development costs can innovate at a more rapid pace, and as a result, product life cycles are dropping. The pace of innovation has increased. What the heck does this have anything to do with education? I've got a list. So listen up, higher ed. Due to the acceleration of innovation, expect the following. Expect competition to arise from everywhere and in every technological format. Expect courses and degrees to be available on mobile devices, giving worldwide access for a significantly reduced price. Expect seamless transition of curriculum among participating institutions. Expect individuals to fully embrace technology change. Expect customer dialogue about the direction of that change. Expect yesterday's courses to be yesterday's dollars. Expect small and significant changes to cause huge responses on the significant scale. Accelerators of change that don't make sense. The winners in tomorrow's educational market will be those institutions who flow in educational innovation. We developed the following model of the global arena in part from the IBM Global Innovation Outlook Report. It demonstrates the physics of globalization and is ACDMS driven. Accelerators of change that don't make sense. The global arena can be thought of as a huge panorama of connected cities. The all-encompassing goal is to achieve center stage of the global arena. This is the place of greatest viability. We have identified six important elements in this arena. 1. Talent. Innovative talent acts like an attractor in our global arena. Global entities seek out talent but engage it in shorter time spans. 2. Soft power. Soft power is more powerful than hard power. This, is not, this not only includes the efficient use of new computer software but also good people skills over shorter time spans context. The internet has become a content dumping ground and as a result content is losing its value. Context, meaning, and user experience are more valuable than content. Academia can no longer focus on the ball, that is content, but must engage in passing the ball. Context is an attractor in the global arena. 4. Value. Value is the most ambiguous quantity in the global arena. We find ourselves asking, what is value? How is it created? 
and how is it captured? Dialogue. No longer a monologue. Customers are expecting to dialogue, to, to have a say in development activities and gladly embrace new developments. This changes the dynamics of present day marketing techniques of fire hosing and branding. 6. Intermediaries. Innovative intermediaries make the connection to other entities where innovation can be used, funded, or enhanced. The world is constantly cycling in change. The global worms, or connected entities of talent and soft power, achieve center stage for a short time only to be pushed out by the next wave of innovation as the panorama rotates. This model directly impacts education. Shortening software life cycles threatens the fabric that many learning management systems are built on. These pyramid systems rely on hundreds of interconnected pages to produce the user interface. Each time data is called, a page must be refreshed, slowing down system performance. Changing the user interface, the red triangle at the top, generally creates cascading errors in hundreds of supporting pages below. It takes time for these errors to be fixed and the system to stabilize. Such a system is Moodle, an open source learning management system used in some cases as a substitute for Blackboard. It is a great software package based on constructive collaboration. However, even the creators have slowed down its development to achieve stability. Systems like these rapidly become antiquated and fall behind becoming uncompetitive in the global arena. Rethinking higher ed is not enough. There is a yang to this yin. You must also have the technology infrastructure fluid enough to push those new ideas into the pan arena. Here is a real example of how this is done. Tomorrow Callahan, one of our Lit and Lang faculty members, wanted a collective podcasting space for her students and so she came to us and began a development dialogue key to this process. Her software criteria were that it be idiot proof, no programming involved, be easy to use, and that she have the ability to edit it. This was a two-day development activity. Matt Overwine, one of our design students, handled the database part of the project. We took an open source solution called Podcast Generator and reprogrammed it to meet her needs. After putting it on the web, we found out that three more instructors wanted the same thing. Tamara acted as an intermediary. Let's take a look at the actual product. Here's the podcast generator used uh, in English 381. We renamed it Norsecast, and you can see there's a number of podcasts that had already been put up by her students.